The Firearms Radio Network provides the bandwidth for this edition of the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Podcast. In a world dominated by gun bunnies and bad information, one show strives to bring you what you need to hear. They don't care about your feelings. They don't really care what you think. Join these men on their quest to bring you the good, the bad, and the ugly that the firearms industry has to offer. Welcome to the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Review Podcast, episode 374. We showcase gun reviews, gear, and anything else you as a gun enthusiast may be looking for. We strive to evaluate products from an unbiased and honest perspective. I'm your host, Chad Wallace, and in this show, we'll be discussing stuff because I was too lazy to put the description in the intro. So, this show is brought to you by Primary Arms. Primary Arms seeks to provide the best shopping experience for everything firearms. With over 13,000 products from your favorite brands, Primary Arms carries a complete selection of rifles, handguns, firearm parts, and shooting gear. Every order comes with a commitment to superior service, fast shipping, and an expert support team. Our Primary Arms product of the week is brought to you by Zane. It's the CRKT M1613 SFG. So it's a knife. Uh, you can go check it out. Uh, it is does have their Zef or Zerf or however serrations on it. So it's a sem- uh, Tanto blade. It's basically one of the, one of the M16 family knives. Uh, they're like fifty four bucks. Uh, That's and the, one the thirteen. Uh, I carry an M16 Tac fourteen um, because they don't offer the one I actually like in the thirteen length in the Tonto. So this being a the thirteen is a sweet spot on the length. So this is probably a, a good size knife. Yeah, the only thing, if it were me, I don't want the double uh, hilt flipper thing that it has, but it'll keep you from cutting yourself so see i like the double flipper thing because of that reason it works like right. a hilt um, right the one i use one side of the flipper is a uh is a strap cutter though it's yes like that yes L-E-K, Z-E, yeah something. and it's like but, the 14 yeah, it's, uh, right so it's a yeah yeah it's, it's the 14 one so it's quite a bit long it barely will fit in a standard jean back pocket gotcha uh, so gotcha. The, the 13's a little bit smaller uh good size knife yeah so Sign up for Primary Arms Newsletter and more at frn.deals slash PA. And with me tonight, as you have probably heard, are Tony and Zane. Uh, So uh, we're going to start with Zane on what we did in firearms because he wasn't here last week. And we know Tony has a plethora of stuff to tell us. (laughs) Yeah, Tony did all the cool stuff. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I have not done anything even the last two weeks in in firearms uh between work and then we've been extremely dry down here and for the listeners that don't know i am also a firefighter so we have been fighting brush fires for the last two weeks down here so i have had zero downtime awesome well i guess i guess i will go next i actually got to the range yesterday you know this holiday stuff uh tried out that primary arms 2x nine millimeter prism scope uh i actually like it better than i thought i would uh so far uh it works good uh it's and it says because it's on a 16 inch barrel i sighted it in at 50 yards in their little triangle at the top and then i tried out the little dots that they say like 100 and 200 and i was ringing a the gong at our my range that's at 200 yards with nine mil pretty much every time after i got it sighted in with that dot you know you're still you know you're still full screen, right? Every, just give me a second here. Here's why I'm full screen. I know, I know. So, so I did that. Uh, I also, uh, also, I got in Isotune Sports. Zane probably knows. I got. They sent both these and the in-ear Bluetooth ones that we talked about a couple weeks ago. Uh, but I was saying these might get sent to Tony because if you're watching the video, they look like they might go go big head person <laughs> in fact i put i put them on over the headphones that i'm wearing so if that tells you anything and then 
Facts and Firearms, our buddies over there, sent Sweet. me one of their PVD c- chameleon coated flame fluted 1022 barrels that they are have started making. Uh, and a hat. See, got a nice fancy hat. So those all came in, and that was the extent of the other stuff I did in firearms. Uh, so now nice. we can get to. I'd be interested. What? I'd be certainly interested in the accuracy you pull out of that fax and barrel because I've been I've been very impressed with fax and barrels. I, you know, uh, and that was that was one of the reasons I. I think they're quality for good quality for the money. I mean, they don't break the bank, but they seem to be making quality barrels. So, right, and and like this one, it's like now I have to get get a stock that I think will match it, that'll look good with it. So, or a chassis or something, but. You know, because putting it in a standard stock is just not going to do it justice. So, no, we'll Uh, we'll find something for it. Tony, take it away. All right, cool. I'm going to just do a concise one because I did a lot. Uh, I was part of the Kevin Dixie training loan event. Um, If you watched Sean Sean Heron last night on We Like Shooting, he talked a lot about it. Dude, I've been to trainings before, and this was a lot different because it had a different feel. It had a feel of community, Um, and you had a lot more minorities than you normally do at a training class. Um, Not only because it was about firearms, it was about business and how to grow your business in the firearms related fields. We had Roy Hill from Brownells. There's a speaker talking about how to uh, advertise and actually use propaganda because, you know, uh, Brownells has a Bureau of Propaganda and that's their advertising arm. They had that there. They had uh, Jara Hutchins. Um, and she was talking about business. They had USCCA there. They're talking about business also and how to grow your business. And that was just Friday night. You know what I mean? That was just Friday night. They had Sean talking about how to start a podcast and run a podcast. And um, Cam, one of the guys about computers and how to handle it and how to grow your websites. And then, of course, I did my spot um, and I spoke on um, advocacy and how to get involved. And then Saturday, we had the firearms training. We had Rob Pincus teaching pistol. We had Dustin Bluth, it's Dustin Pluth, uh, Springfield Armory shooter. He was uh, teaching not competitive shooting, but shooting on the move and transitioning between targets. Uh, we had Ken Scott of uh, Provectus Group teaching and training on rifle. And we had all of that. Plus, we had a uh, professional knife thrower, if you know him from Instagram. He came and taught us all how to throw knives, which was awesome. I nailed it the first time, like the professional that I am. Um, <laughs> we had a hand-to-hand combat dude out there. So we did a lot of training. And then day three, um, which was Sunday, we did a lot of content creation and interviews and shooting stuff. And Tactical Life was there. And we just shot the snot out of their guns. And I just showed these guys before the show started a, a, <laughs> a video of me shooting full auto, uh, one of the Tactical Life guns. And I took the uh, high high point nine nine five nine millimeter carbine in a high tower armory MBS ninety five chassis out there to the rifle class. Got some video of me shooting it, other shooting it, and it was a lot of fun. I learned a lot. This is the Kevin Dixie Train and Learn event. Pretty soon tickets will be up on sale for the twenty twenty two event. And if you don't go, you're an idiot. Wow. How the uh, how the <clears throat> high point run in class run pretty smooth. Or high, point, high point ran 100%. We had one magazine to stop functioning, the the, the uh, follower. It, it's like the spring popped mm. from beneath the follower or it got jammed. So it was like five rounds went mm. out and then the others didn't feed. Slapped the side of it. It popped up and fed. And I was like, yeah, that's a no-no. So I you know, emptied it out, threw it on the ground, stomped it, and it didn't do a damn thing to it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this piece of crap stomped nothing. I'm like, okay. I mean, luckily, I number all of mine, so I have tape on the bottom with the number. Yeah. So that gets thrown away, and it's a $10 part. Um, and oh, Rob, Yeah, magazines, uh, are, magazines yeah. are consumables. And, you know, yeah, when they go definitely. bad, throw them out. Throw them out. Um, and, uh, of course, I was in Missouri, and I had the AR-9. And, of course, I had Jersey Legal 10-round mag. So what I definitely did not do was by 32 round magazine Glock mag so I could run the class and not look like an idiot. I didn't do that. No, no because you borrowed them from people in free state. <laughs> Actually, I did borrow. <laughs> I borrowed some from uh, <laughs> man. Look, because I just didn't want I didn't want the shitstorm never come with it or the uh, uh, temptation of going. 
nobody knows yeah. better. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, no. Nah. So uh, um, Pete from Carolina Custom Foam, and if you don't know who he is, he's the dude, dude that made my pistol case, was nice enough to let me borrow uh, to a Men 2 magazine, uh, Glock mags that hold 32 or 34 rounds. I think they hold I 34. I have one around here, and it seems yeah. to work fine. Yeah, so he allowed me to use that, which I thought was awesome sauce because, I mean, really, whatever. And I also even wore tactical. I, I wore a, uh, a load-bearing vest, a tactical vest. Every every t- uh, every picture I saw of you, all you had on was one of those racist Hawaiian shirts. <laughs> yeah, I did. I made sure I wore one of those too. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I I had a, 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 <laughs> a assault vest or whatever the hell you want to call that thing. Yeah. Um, it it looked like a tactical sports bra. <laughs> <laughs> hey, whatever. It what? was a plate carrier. It was a plate carrier, but dude, I'm bigger than the average. For player. like the ten, but the standard like ten by twelve plates or eight by mm-hmm. ten or whatever they are. Yeah, the little dinky ones. Yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah, I I, I got gotcha. you. So I guess since we're done with that, we'll get into. You want me to read disclaimer? No, we got to get to the announcements. Oh, okay. Go we go, can't go. forget our buddies over at Patriot Patchco because they're awesome. Uh, I totally forgot to click on the link, but it's like a drone or something with fireworks coming out of it for June or something. It looks pretty cool. That's all I can say. Uh, go check them out. Check out all their other cool stuff they have on the website. Cleaning mats, t-shirts, you know, scratch and dent sales when they have those. All kinds of cool stuff. There's also a bunch of affiliate links. If you would like to check them out, each, you know, literal penny helps us out. So there's that. And now Tony can read Rob's Rob's job. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the individual co-hosts and do not reflect the official policy or position of the Firearms Radio Network and or their employees. This is not legal advice, nor should it be considered as such. Viewer discretion is advised. This is especially true on live shows. There we go. There is no there is no product review tonight, so let's go into the product spotlight and discussion. Yeah. First up, Aimpoint brought out their Acro P2. MSRP on this is $599. So Rob's not here to complain about me putting stuff that's too high priced in the in here. So <laughs> <laughs> which if you know it's Aimpoint, so this is not out of the line for them or what it is. Uh, but basically, it's their updated Acro site. Uh, if you don't know, the Acro is a fully enclosed, like, micro red dot uh, system. This is a 3.5 MOA dot. Uh, it does have now 50,000 hours of constant battery operation. Uh, it has six daylight and four night vision settings. It only weighs 2.1 ounces uh, for the site without an adapter base on it. Uh, you can submerse it up to 35 meters or 115 feet in water, which is far more than a lot of them. You, a lot of the micro red dots can be. Uh, they say it's optimized for pistol applications. Uh, it runs a. It includes a CR2032 battery and an Aimpoint T10 tool, uh, which is your Torx 10 tool to tighten it down. Uh, like we said, it is an enclosed completely enclosed emitter so that rain dust stuff like that won't get on the emitter and basically make it useless yes rain and stuff will get on the outer lenses but typically the dot inside can still be seen so you have that's an advantage to completely enclosed especially if you live in a state where it rains a lot uh of course everything else is pretty much standard parallax free it is a red dot uh it can, you can get a bunch of different adapter plates because being a complete enclosed site, uh, it you can't mount screws from the top like you do with a lot of the open, like the RMR, Hollow Sun, all of those. You can mount them through the top. So they have to have an adapter plate for the little interface, which is kind of, you know, it's like a pick rail or something to that effect. Uh it's an aim point micro mount, but you guys get the idea of what it is. Uh, let's see. Temperature range it operates is minus 49 Fahrenheit to 160. It is 1.9 inches by 1.3 inches by 1.2 inches high. 
you know, not really much to say about it. Uh, you don't have to mo- remove the optic to change the battery, which is also a big plus. Uh, I mean, to some extent, because you don't have to re-zero it, even though it probably wouldn't lose zero. Either way, it is there. You know, every time I've ever looked through a Aimpoint product, I, I am impressed with what they are. I do not personally own any, but that's not saying that I wouldn't, uh, especially if, you know, you're going to go swimming with it or drop it repeatedly, stuff like that. They are pretty much the industry standard for stuff like that. Uh, okay, you guys can tell us all about why you do or don't yeah. want this. <clears throat> Well, I mean, this is kind of what the uh, original one should have been in the first place. Because the, the original one they came out with, it was like, I mean, I was talking to dudes and they were talking about getting less than 20 days worth of battery life out of them. Right. Um, which, okay, batteries are cheap, but I'm not changing the battery on my pistol optic Yeah. twice a month. No, like, it, it's I, not going to happen. Well, changing it um, once a year the thing, is, is the, great. Right, that's fine. No problem. I I'll change it twice a year, even like I, that's not a big deal. But like, yeah, um, the closed emitter thing is awesome uh, for Florida because uh, we have usually <laughs> at least like ninety seven percent humidity going on, um, and so getting out of your air conditioning vehicle into that. Now it's not a huge deal with concealed carry because the optics kept close to your body. Your body heat keeps it from fogging up. But if you're carrying a gun in a duty holster, lens fog is a thing. Um, so they, they do look kind of awkward on the top of pistols, like a big mailbox. Yeah, but, I, I know. <laughs> uh, but I don't really care what it looks like if it works. Uh, so I may end up picking up one. I was looking at, I'm, I'm kind of looking at these and then the Hollison 509. Is it 509? Yeah, I think it's the, the five, I think it's the 509. Yeah. Yeah. I may end up picking one of those up for when I carry a gun in the safari land setup. Um, again, like for concealed carry, when it's pressed up against your body, your body heat usually will keep it from uh, fogging up. Not as big of a deal. But, uh, yeah, they got the battery life right on it, and that was a big deal. The, the battery life on the original one was garbage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm laughing because they're talking about 20,000 rounds of Smith and Wesson. 40, 40, Smith, 40, 40 short and weak. I'm laughing because it's like, oh, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, that's what they tested this with. So, yeah. Anyway, um, I think it's awesome. I think also they have tactile clicks now when you move the settings uh, when you're trying to adjust yes. it, which they didn't have in the yep. old one. Yeah, that's and a I plus. think that's a lot better. Um, and, and they upgraded it, man. And here's proof. Maybe you shouldn't buy the first thing that comes out sometime and let other people beta test it for you. Slide in later. Oh, or here's another lesson. Maybe if it doesn't really bother you changing the freaking battery that often, you can pick up one cheap for all the suck. I mean, guys that bought it first and getting rid of it so they can get the next one. Yeah. And, and I'm kind of with Zane. We don't have problems with stuff fogging up as much as it just rains a whole lot here. <laughs> So, yeah, you know, I've had I've had the open, you know, the hollow sun and stuff out when it's been raining, and you know, you can get rain on the emitter and not see anything. You know, usually that's not as likely, but yeah, this is something like this is a good option, especially if you're in humid or wet environments, uh, heck, snow, any pretty much any environment where there's moisture. Uh, I can understand yeah. why. Uh, uh. I'll be honest, like before I got before I got my Safari Land holster for the 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 dot, and I was still you know when I was working with a gun carrying an iron sight gun and only concealed carrying the dot, I didn't even treat my lens with any fog stuff just because there's a shirt over it, so it's not going to get wet. It like it's not to me at least in my experience it hasn't been a huge deal if you're only concealed carrying a gun, but. Yeah. If you're carrying a gun in a duty holster, now it definitely becomes something you have to be aware of. And I think closed emitter really is, is the route to go in that case. I think you'll see this adopted by a lot of law enforcement agencies now that they got the battery life done. Because the, the, remember, with most law enforcement agencies, they're probably not even going to let the user change the battery. you got to go to the armory to have your battery changed. And uh, your armor doesn't want to see you. 
you know, three times a month to change your battery. Very true. Very yeah. true. So I think I think you'll start to see law enforcement adopting this optic in the next couple of years. Yeah, I, I, I think you're probably right. And here's the thing about Aimpoint that I like, even though I have stigmatism. Um, their dot is clearer than anybody else's dot. And I mean, and I, I'm a Hollison dude. You know what I mean? I have Hollison gave me multiple of these red dots. And I run them, and they're good. But there's a more precise dot on all the aim points I've used compared to the Hollison with my condition and my eyes. You know what I mean? I do because I I agree with you. The uh, my astigmatism is the same way. The aim points have a a finer, more dot dot because they still don't look like dots to me. But they don't like mine isn't so bad that it flares out super. Like a lot of people, mine is more just of a small starburst. But yes, the aim point does that. I actually have I have an old Tasco, like when they were made in Japan, Pro Point. Mm-hmm. Actually, I have two that are made in Japan, and both of those have awesome dots for my yeah. stigmatism in them. Now, of course, these are ancient, and the battery life on them is not something you would use. I just use them on like a twenty-two, but you know. It's one of those things. It's like, hey, they were awesome dots, but you know, hey, that's that now. So, I yeah, you know the old uh, Batman cartoons, and like when he punches someone, it's like pow or bam like, or yeah. That's what that's what the dots look like for me. Um, <clears throat> but uh, still, it's still a smaller aiming point than a front sight. So yeah, that, yeah. I don't, exactly, exactly. So that was the aim point Acro P two. Next up, we have another optic. Vortex has brought out their Venom in a 5 to 25 by 56 first focal plane. MSRP on this is only 699.99. Uh, I I'm actually was pretty thrilled that they came out with this. Not that I'm going to run out and buy one, but it compares with others that are on the market, like maybe the the Swamp Fox and stuff like that. They're 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 getting into decent lower priced optics than some of their other <laughs> lines uh which i still think that it's it's a good good price point for decent glass even though i haven't looked through this i'm you know we kind of know what we're getting having looked through enough of their products and other companies uh but yeah it is a 34 millimeter tube uh it's got all kinds of stuff uh i relief it's 3.6 inches which is probably pretty good considering what this is uh i put the moa one they make a mil dot one also so your adjustments are quarter moa or probably 0.1 mil or something uh you get 25 moa per rotation 85 moa max uh of course par- parallax is adjustable it weighs 35 ounces so it's not light it is 15 inches long so of course it's not small but you i wouldn't expect that from a 5 to 25 anyway uh it does come with a three inch sunshade if that is something you are looking for it is a christmas tree style reticle you can click through the links and find find it if you really want to take a look at it uh it does have their you know optical features fully coated XD lens optics, pretty much all the stuff that you're going to get for this price. Glass etched reticle. Uh, it does have their, uh, what is it? Zero stop. Which one is it? Uh, their, yeah, streamlined rev stop zero system. So you can set your zero stop uh, so that you can always just adjust it back to wherever your zero setting is without much problems. Uh, I don't know. I it is. It looks like a decent, you know, product for what it is. It is not illuminated, but in this price range, I wouldn't kind of expect it to be. Uh, but to me, it looks like something that I would put on a somewhat semi precision rifle because it's in my price range, <laughs> uh, as opposed to paying two thousand bucks for a scope, which. I understand what you get for two thousand bucks, but I also understand that for what I'm doing, seven hundred bucks is probably fine. Can I can I just say that I despise Vortex's <laughs> naming scheme, like how they their lines, the way they put the their lines, yes. like you have the the like, Viper line, the Venom Vortex, line. When I think Vortex Venom, 
I think of their red dot, you know, because but they have venoms and everything. They have crossfires and everything. They have. I, I, I don't like that. I don't like it. But that's just a personal quirk. Um, but yeah, I'm sure the optics fine. I don't. I don't really have a use case for anything this big. I don't. You know, Some, I don't shoot that far. Someday you will. Someday when you get old, Maybe. like Tony and I. Yeah, right. I just find it funny. That it seems like uh, <laughs> Vortex got the name and scheme from GI Joe toys. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I like to thank Vortex because they're the ones that brought in this level of uh, quality at this price level. And what they created was great because before them, you wouldn't see something in this price range that you pretty much assured works like it's supposed to. Um, but the thing when they broke the code is they kicked the door open for others like Attaball, Swap Fox, <laughs> and, and, they, and they're in the same thing and they're doing the same stuff. So it's cool. Um, I think it'll probably be quality glass. And if not, well, somebody else is coming along to eat their lunch if they do a bad job of it. Yeah, I got you. Uh, and you know Vortex stands behind their products. Mm-hmm. So, you know. Yeah, they're not going to release something that's totally crap because <laughs> they got to replace it for free if it breaks. Exactly. So. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um. So I think uh, again, I'll say it: we're living in the golden age of this stuff, dudes. I mean, before, look, we all knew, like, growing up in the seventies, eighties, uh, optics were iffy, and if they were solid optics, they were really, really, really expensive. It's not the case anymore. We have a level of quality that people would have dreamed about thirty years ago. Well, and and in Tony and my my case, a scope that you know, say a fixed four power scope that we paid, or say a three to nine that we paid, you know, two hundred bucks for, and say the mid eighties, which was a probably a decent scope then. We'd look through that nowadays, and a literally a fifty dollar cheapie from Walmart would probably look better than the one we paid for back in the eighties. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. What what was premium in the eighties would be in a blister pack hanging on the shelf at Walmart today. Exactly. So you know. Oh yeah, I was talking. I was talking to a buddy of mine who's uh with a sniper platoon in the National Guard, and he was like, "Dude, you know, you can for under a thousand dollars buy a rifle, rings, scope, and with factory ammunition, get hits out to a thousand yards these days." Yep. It's like twenty years ago. No way. No way. Nope. Like for under a grand, you can be in rifle and buy ammo off the shelf and make it at a thousand. Yeah, you could buy any one of the Ruger, uh, let's see. American. Uh, yeah, the Ruger American or the, uh, not Mossberg, the uh, Savage line. Savages, yeah. yeah, any of those in like 6.5 Creedmoor or even 308 or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Buy, you know, literally a. Five hundred dollars scope. <laughs> Five hundred dollar optic. Put some hundred dollar rings on it, and then buy some some you yeah. know, nozzler or, or whatever. Right. Some a good ammo, and you're hitting. Still, I mean, you're not gonna you're not gonna be shooting tenth minute groups. You might, but, but you can you can you can hold you can hold under a minute and at a thousand yards. Yep, <laughs> like, insane. And that's where. And as long as you know what you're doing, yeah. That's the other that's the other component. And the that, other component's a shooter. And that's where a scope like this venom fits in because you know you can it, yeah it's 700 bucks but i don't know what retail will be in a year when you can actually find something uh mm-hmm. but you know even if it's 600 bucks you're still you're still right in that ballpark with good glass that you can hit out to a thousand if you need to so yep. so that was the vortex venom 5 to twenty five fifty six. next up is something we haven't played with but it's got a unique ability that I, this is why I stuck this in here is it's the Ultradyne Mercury muzzle brake. Uh, no, that's, that's a mouthful. Uh, MSRP is 94 bucks. Uh, it, uh, it's a decent looking muzzle brake. It is this particular one's for two, two, three, five, five, six. Uh, it says it's running progressive 90 degree side ports. So, vents the gas at intervals to spread out the recoil impulse uh, and allows, you know, better accurate follow-up shots. Uh, They say it's compact, lightweight. Yeah. But basically, and it is compatible with their Dynamount on-barrel sight system, which is something I'll explain here in a minute. Uh, It does include a timing nut. 
uh, so you don't have to like use a crush washer or anything to that effect. It is made from 416 stainless. It's machined in the USA. Uh, they also rate it for a d- bunch of other calibers like 224 Weatherby Mag. Uh, 22250, a bunch of others. So, you know, you get that. Uh, they don't recommend it for anything below a 12 inch barrel. Uh, it is threaded half 28. Uh, they re- it says they require a 600 thousandths of an inch barrel threading, which is pretty standard on an AR style platform. Uh, it is salt bath nitride finished. Uh, the brake itself weighs 3.1 ounces, total is 3.9. Uh, it's 2.43 inches long and 0.865 inches in diameter. Three-quarter inch wrench flats so you can snug it down. Uh, let's see, there was something I was missing in here. Oh, I was going to tell you about the their little mounting system they make, which is, this is compatible with because it's got a little, like, collar that goes on it. And then the muzzle brake has some, like, pin locations in it. And they make a front sight base with a front sight that will lock into those so it doesn't go on your hand guard for like a f- flip up sight or I don't I can't remember if they make a flip up or not, but it may gives you a front sight post that hooks to the barrel. So, you know, if you're slinging up or something, as we know with any hand guard, it free floats the barrel. But if your sight's mounted on the front and you put a sling on it and it moves, then your sight's off. Uh, I mean, so this puts the front sight on the barrel, uh, and because it has locator pins, you can also mount that front sight at a 45-degree offset uh, or straight up and down, either either side for 45. You know, if this muzzle brake does what they say it does, which, you know, by looking at it, it looks like a decent design, I could see how it probably at least works fairly well. But because of that sight ability, if you actually are using a front sight or want a front sight that's kind of a cool a cool addition that you can get uh that other manufacturers don't use Uh, either way you know 94 bucks for machined muzzle brake is not terrible i mean there's ones that cost a lot more and ones that are a few bucks cheaper yeah that's you know and hey uh who knows they make a few other things too so you guys take it away yeah, Ultradyne makes like really cool stuff. <laughs> that's I, I'm, I'm trying to be tactful, and it's all new to me. So please excuse me if I'm kind of messing this up. Look, it's two two three, dude. You don't need all that, but they make it. They make like uh, what is it? The equivalent of HK making something. It's like well over engineered, overpriced, overcomplicated for the thing it does, but it is still cool. But when and Tony when Tony says he doesn't need a muzzle brake on a T23, there's this video of him shooting an M16 <laughs> on the internet and and it it has a muzzle brake on it that causes this full auto to not move at all. So I'm just saying that maybe we should, you know, call Tony out on his 223 doesn't need a muzzle brake. Okay. <laughs> 223 anything else you do a full auto. Yeah, okay, a muzzle brake or mitigate. But whatever, dude. Hey, listen, they make cool stuff. Um they have a really cool sight. Um I actually saw one live on on Tactical Life's rifle, uh which is a circle in a circle. Um really fine sights. Again, they make cool stuff, well made, really complicated. Uh, and supposedly it works and from everything I heard. So, hey, if you want to do it, do it. I live in Jersey. I have to have a compensator on my AR. So if you have to have one, have the coolest one you can find. Yeah, I uh, do not live in Jersey, and I prefer flash hiders for my use case over brakes. Um, I prefer it too because everybody hates you on the line at the range. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that. <laughs> there is certainly that. <laughs> Yes. Uh, uh, we were doing a class this weekend. We were doing a class this weekend, and we're out on the line doing a night shoot, so you don't see what anybody has. You know what I mean? Because we have the flashlights and everything. All of a sudden, someone cranked something out, and they had some cops. Someone was like, whoa, whoa, cease fire. What the F is that? Who's shooting a cannon? No, nah, no, nah, it's just a 10-inch barreled AR with, like, a cookie, a cookie cutter comp on it or something like that. Well, and and the thing is, though, is is if you take it off completely – or the flash hider off, those things throw a fireball like crazy. 
Trust me, I know from experience. <laughs> so it's better to have at least a comp than than nothing. Yeah. But yeah, I, I get you too. So you know, it's it's another option out there, especially if you're looking for like some sort of front sight that mounts on your barrel. Uh, that is the Ultradyne Mercury muzzle brake. They make some other different muzzle brakes. This one just happens to be their newest. Uh, next up, uh, I threw an expensive neck knife in here. Uh, mm-hmm. Because yes, you did, I did, <laughs> did. and it, it I, it's kind of cool, but uh, it is the Medford Thorn uh, MSRP is one hundred ninety bucks. Uh, it is a little neck knife, uh, kind of cool looking. Uh, total length is five point eight inches. Blade is two and three quarters. Uh, it's point eight inches wide. The blade thickness is two hundred thousandths. Uh, it's kind of got a reverse Tanto style point. I don't know exactly what you call it. Uh, you just did. <laughs> yeah, well, well, now I switched over to the. There's also a link to Blade HQ that has it on there. Uh, the blade grind is a chisel grind. Uh, you can get it in like black OD or FDE. Uh, and I do know because Medford has sent me a knife. They sent me one of their Proximas years ago. Now that thing is indestructible and it's if you're in the market for a super nice knife they are i would say they're worth the money now okay especially if you're gonna like put your life on the line for this neck knife it might be worth buying a 190 dollars knife but you know it's kind of to each their own i don't know if i'd buy one i think it's a super cool looking knife but I'm not going to, I don't wear a neck knife. I probably should, but (laughs) then I'd have to train with it also. And, and you know, most people I pull up my shirt and they run off anyway. So, (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's going to be that kind of party. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, you guys got anything on it? Nah, neck knives aren't really my jam. Yeah. They're, I mean, Uh, they're kind of a novelty. I mean, I guess if you're like out in the woods or something, it's nice to have it convenient right there to access either hand, but. I don't no, know. Actually, I, uh, if you live in Portland, mine, <laughs> that's I gave out mine to my father-in-law. I gave mine to my father-in-law mm-hmm. when he was driving a cab because you might not be able to reach for something in your waist if someone reaches across the seat to gaffle you. So your hand goes up to their arm, you pull your neck knife, and then you do work on them. Um, that's why he had his. So there is a niche reason for, to use neck knives as a backup or a backup to a backup. So there's reasons out there. This particular one is made out of SV35 steel. Is that what it says? Yes, I believe that is correct. I forgot to mention yeah. that. Yeah, S35 V in steel. Sorry, got my letters and number backwards. Not a steel guy, but I am a dude that looks stuff up. And I'm going, I can get a knife for half this price. It doesn't have Metford's name on it. That's a neck knife. Um, not as cool looking, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Not as cool looking, but there's other things in this price range. Uh, A neck knife is a very specific tool, Um, but they make good stuff. They make really some of the coolest looking knives out there, but their price range uh, will lay the mollywop on you. Yeah, because they're semi-custom knives, really, is what they are. Mm -hmm. So, yep. Uh, And like, like I was saying to Zane, you know, if you're going out in the woods where wild animals are, it's like, yeah, okay, I live by Portland, Oregon. I understand. <laughs> uh-huh. Wearing a neck knife wild in Portland, life. Oregon might not be a bad idea. <laughs> Just say it. Or Seattle, or you can name a bunch of other cities. So that was the Medford Thorn. And next up, I don't happen to have mine with me, but Walker Defense has released their Nile Rail Panels. MSRP is forty nine ninety nine. Uh, that's for a three pack, and they are a silicon carbide uh, aggressive textured grip panel for your M lock rails. Uh, they pretty much don't weigh anything. Uh, they're like a hundred thousandths thick, so they don't add hardly any thickness to your hand guard. Uh, they they are really grippy. I will say uh, the ones right now are. To, they cover three M lock rails, so they're you know what six inches long or somewhere around there. Not quite that four. Uh, basically, they're pretty cool. I, I I have them. I actually have had them for a little while. <laughs> they sent them to me. Uh, they I will say they are cool. Price is right there with the rest of them. They'll get a review here someday in the future. Uh, 
but I do know everything on them is made in America, uh, including the screws. So, you know, they're not skimping on anything. Uh, but yeah, they're grippy. If you like grip panels or want some texture, they're probably worth what you get. They only come in black right now, though, so no OD green or FDE or anything like that. Tony, Zane? I have uh, never used any sort of a rail cover, rail scale, rail thing, so I don't have much. I think you would. Uh, like, I think you would like these, just because they do give you good grip without adding anything. Probably. I have a little. I have a, like a, a little nubby hand stop on the on the front of my rifle, but that's just, that's yeah. all I all I currently use. I got gotcha. you. I have actual rail covers on my M sixteen A four clone or A three clone, whichever one it is. It has the ones uh, you know that the military actually issued. That's some bulky garbage. So yeah, um, <laughs> I mean that's a hey, the early night what two thousands called. And they want their hand guard back. So this is cool. Whatever. I mean, it's good. I've never used it, so I'm assuming it's good just based on what you say. Yeah, well, well my son even was helping use them. Uh, okay. Just because he was w- with me on one of the trips. And I asked him how he liked them. He goes, they actually work pretty darn good. I'm like, that's good to know, especially from somebody that doesn't, like, shoot all the time like w- we do. Or so. Yeah, I mean, I, I really have no problem, you know, with what's on my rifles now but this is something different i'm willing to try it just to see what it is because i mean you know you learn stuff as you go yep yeah i got you uh so yeah there's eventually there will be a review on them so keep looking uh it's probably down the list but those are the walker defense nile silicon carbide m-lock rail panels is the official official name uh, the Nile actually stands for non-slip inlaid element, which doesn't, yeah, okay. It doesn't mean anything yeah. to me, but there you go. So we do not have any listener feedback. So now Tony can tell us about what he's doing in what state and when. <laughs> the next second is for everyone diversity shooting will be held at the Heritage Guild in Easton, PA. On, I think, the 17th of this month. It's just taking a really long time to load. Uh, on the 17th of this month. So I uh, can't wait to see you guys out there. I have yet to return home from the St. Louis trip. But when I get there, I will post these up. Uh, the tickets for sale and start advertising it. What I would like you guys to do if, when you see it on my social media is share it in your circle. Uh, my last event was actually Shadow Band. And people didn't even see it was going on. So if you could, please share my events. Uh, if you want to see the work we do, go to diversityshoot.com. If you want to help finance the work we do, please go to diversityshoot.com. You can also buy your T-shirts like Gun Control Equals Racism, which I have on today. Uh, I don't get paid on that. That's $10 flat with shipping. So if you just want to spread the word and be an advocate in your corner of the world, do that. And here's the big news. Um, <laughs> here's the big news. I am going to become a 501c3 charitable organization. I'm starting the paperwork as soon as I get home. And that's going to be the big news with the diversity shoot. I'm going adulting. <laughs> and it's not going to be a hobby anymore. It's going to be real business. So that's what I'm doing. Please support the work I do. I appreciate the years of support I've gotten from not only uh, the network, but the friends on this podcast I really appreciate it guys I really really do thanks awesome uh, oh I was I was going to ask you something but I don't remember what it was because you don't have any of the information in front of you <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I guess oh, oh something else cool uh, Roy from uh, is Brown Owls uh, from Brown Owls is sending headsets uh, Air Pro out so they're going to be at my next event I, I might raffle them off and put together a killer bag. Killer bags of swag. Woohoo. So, that pretty much is head, heads us into the wrap up. Send questions, comments, or feedback to gungearreview at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us an iTunes review. It helps us out in standings or something with iTunes and probably Google Play and all of those. Uh, don't forget to check out all the other great shows on the Firearms Radio Network at firearmsradio.tv 
Don't forget to visit the Firearms Insider for reviews, links to all the stuff we talk about because it, you can link through to the show notes. Uh, also, the affiliates and stuff like that is on there. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram at Firearms Insider. And as always, thank you for listening to the largest pound-for-pound pound podcast on the network. And we are out. If you've enjoyed this edition of the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Podcast, then go to firearmsradio.tv to hear more firearm-related shows.